Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started here with the next segment, hour number two. And how's everybody doing so far tonight? Doing okay? Heist is, says he's doing okay. Hopefully we're staying on track here. And let me give you your motivational quote for the night. So I try to give you these every now from time to time to keep you on track. This was by Benjamin Franklin. It says, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So I thought that was very, very applicable to preparing for the PE exam. And many of you are here tonight, so that means you're preparing, and I'm sure you're working hard on your homework and preparing each day. But just remember that day is ticking closer, and <laughs> and uh, we just have to keep working each day and remember that that day will be here and gone before we know it. I don't know about that. that, that not sure if he was or not, but um, he was very a very smart man, that's for sure. Okay, one more, and I'll give you your, your kind of quick tip for preparing. One thing to think about, we're getting a little closer to the, the day, which is maybe not quite ready to do do your sample exam. You kind of want to time it the right, what, right time, but you do want to allow yourself, and taking your sample exam, um, you want to allow yourself time to adjust and refine your review based on what what you find during your sample exam. In other words, you make a you get 25% right, then you know you need to pick up the pace and find some areas. If you get 90% right, or if you find one particular area that you need to work on, then you can refine your review. Um, but the, my tip for you actually is to build your endurance. And taking an eight-hour exam really is going to be, for some of you, I know you work an eight-hour day or 10-hour day or 12-hour day, but actually taking an engineering exam for eight hours is much different than being at the office for eight hours when you've got coffee breaks and so forth to do. So why don't you think about building up your endurance and actually sitting in a chair for eight hours doing a, a difficult exam for that whole entire, entire period of time and working on actually sitting in that chair working problems for extended periods of time, you know, four hours at a time, three hours at a time. So think about that and maybe how you could do that. Taking your sample exam will help with that. Actually creating the conditions along with the endurance of taking the exam and being you know, focused for, for eight hours is actually creating the conditions of the exam day. And that's what my point about the sample exam was, was you know, moving toward getting a sample exam done. And of course the PPI is part of your required text, but also you know, get the NCWS sample exam um, get you know a handful of problems that you could do over a four-hour period maybe to practice sitting in a chair working problems for that continued period of time. But create those conditions. Get your two boxes ready. Go ahead and start pretending like exam is here, and you have to actually find the information you're looking for and and do that and set certain things um, set the certain things in play that will be like exam day. Ryan says you know sometimes you may have people moving around and coughing and whatnot, so maybe think about that. You may be better off. Um, I, I personally studied at the library at times. I studied at home at times, and I studied at work or at the coffee shop. I tried to study just about everywhere I possibly could. Um, sometimes it was hard to stay focused, and so you kind of had to change the environment. But I did have some days where I actually spent four hours, eight hours, and created that exam condition. And so that's a, a tip for you to consider in your review is actually build that endurance. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another example of soil classification. With that being said, and you're giving your, your quick tip, let's move on to your six minute solve problems. Um, this is another example of soil classification. This comes from the uh, six minute solve problems for Geotech, GE. Problem number two, the Following laboratory test results for Atterberg limits and particle size distribution, i.e. sieve analysis, sieve analysis, were obtained for a soil. So now they give it to the data in percent passing. On this problem, they give us these sieve numbers, 4, 10, 40, and 200. They do give us the millimeter size alongside that, which is nice, I suppose. This B3 reflects probably a boring number. 
like a boring three. And this data was taken between 10 to 11 feet. So these are our percent passing for those four sieves. And here's our Atterberg limits, LL of 31 and a PL of 25. Um, so we could calculate our PI is going to be the difference between those two numbers would be 6. We'll go ahead and calculate that real quick as well. All right, they want us to calculate it based on USCS. Okay, so first thing we're going to need to know is the F200, and is it coarse grain or fine grain? Of course, we know that if it's, since 10% passes the number 200 sieve, everything else is larger than that. 90% um, is coarser than the number 200 sieve, so are we coarse or fine? Okay, how he says coarse, I would agree with that. So actually, let's take a look at our, let's just briefly check our multiple choice. That would actually tell us we're coarse. They're all begin with an S. S, M, S, P, S, W, S, C, S, W, S, M. So we could have said that anyway, but based on our, our multiple choice. But we know that we're coarse because 90% is greater than the number 200 sieve. 